In this example, we have ourselves a particle, and he's moving along the x-axis. So we have this function x of t that's going to model the position of our particle on that x-axis at any time t. And for the sake of this problem, we'll say t is measured in seconds. And so the interval that we're going to work with uh, is from 0 to 4, so time t equals 0 to time t equals 4. And specifically in this problem, we would like to determine the intervals on which the particle is speeding up and the intervals in which the particle is slowing down. So remember, in order for a particle to be speeding up, we kind of need to address its velocity and its acceleration. And for example, if its velocity is positive, that means the particle is moving to the right. And if its acceleration is also positive, it means the particle is being pushed to the right. So he'll be speeding up. And so we have that relationship between the velocity and the acceleration. And so now that we've talked about the velocity and acceleration, let's go ahead and find functions for them. So our velocity function, v of t, can be found by differentiating our position function. And so we have this x of t, which is our position function on the x-axis. So let's differentiate it, and that'll give us our velocity function. So we have our polynomial. We'll go term by term. And so the derivative of t cubed will be 3t squared and negative 7t squared will go to negative 14t, and positive 15t will go to plus 15, and of course the derivative of a constant is just 0. Next, let's go ahead and get a function for our acceleration, so a of t, and that's just going to be the first derivative of our velocity function. And so, same kind of process, we'll see 6t minus 14. Okay, so we have our position function. We know where the particle is at any given time. We have our velocity function. We know how fast and in what direction the particle is moving. And we have our acceleration function, which tells us kind of what's the force being applied. Is it being pushed to the right or to the left or kind of what's going on there? All right, so the next thing we need to do here is to determine critical points given this velocity and acceleration function. So we need to set v of t equal to zero and a of t equal to zero because that will tell us at what points our velocity is zero and our acceleration is zero. These are important because if we are able to kind of nail down where the velocity is zero, then on either side of that, uh, the particle will either be moving right or left. And similarly, when the acceleration is zero, we know that there's no force being applied to the particle, no push. But on either side, it could be uh, being pushed to the right or the left. But more importantly, and more to the point, is we, we care about these zero values because if the velocity is going to change from positive to negative or the acceleration is going to change from positive to negative, it has to pass through zero. So that's why we care about these zeros. So let's take our velocity function, which is that 3t squared minus 14t plus 15, and go ahead and set that equal to zero. Uh, looks like we can factor this nicely, maybe 3t minus 5, and then t minus 3. So it looks like values of t in this case will be 5 thirds and 3. And similarly, our acceleration function is going to be 6t minus 14 equals 0. And I'm going to take this approach. I'm going to go ahead and factor this out and get a 3t minus 7. And then I see that t equals 7 thirds. So we have three critical values. We have our 5 thirds, our 3, and our 7 thirds. And we kind of need to keep these in mind um, because we're going to check around those values to kind of figure out what that particle is doing. So to get a nice visual representation of what's happening, we're going to go ahead and draw this number line. And we're going to start them at 0. And let's put this 4 down here, because again, that's our interval. We're going from 0 to 4, so we'll focus in on this interval. And uh, for the sake of the velocity here, we'll use the color blue. And so let's mark these critical numbers on our number line. So we have 3 down here, and maybe we'll put 5 thirds somewhere right here. Okay, and then let's use a purple 
for the acceleration, and we'll put our 7 thirds maybe somewhere right here. Obviously, these are not to scale, but they're kind of spaced, so we have some, uh, some area to work. All right, so I'm going to extend uh, these lines here on the edge. And I'm going to do so because I'm kind of breaking this number line up into a top half and a bottom half. In this top, I want to focus on the velocity. And on the bottom, I want to be able to focus on the acceleration. And so we saw that the two critical points that were given to us based on the velocity were the 5 thirds and the 3. So I'm going to go ahead, 5 thirds and 3. And I'm just going to break that velocity up. But I'm also going to do a little dash line down here because he, he still kind of matters as far as the acceleration is concerned, but uh, obviously not as much as the velocity. And I'll do the same thing with our 7 thirds, which was our acceleration. And I'll kind of do a little dash line up here. So we have our number line or our little continuum here broken up into, it looks like, four different regions. For the velocity, we have this first region the second region, and then the third region. And our acceleration has this first region and the second region. So those regions we're talking about, I'm kind of ignoring those dashed lines for now. Okay, so the next step then, we know for the velocity that it has these critical points at 5 thirds and 3, which means the velocity is 0 at those points. But how about in between those points? Let's get some test points here to work with. So maybe we'll use a 1 right there, and maybe we could use 2 somewhere over here, and maybe like a 3 and a half. So our velocity then, we'll check it at 1, at 2, and at three and a half, or we could say seven halves. And our acceleration, it looks like we could try it at one and try it at three. So the acceleration at one and the acceleration at three. And we care only about the sign. I don't care about the value itself. I just care if the value is positive or negative. It's because that will uh, tell us if the velocity is negative, that's moving left, or if the velocity is positive, it's moving right. And for the acceleration, if it's negative, it's being pushed to the left. If it's positive, it's being pushed to the right. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll use the factored forms here because these are much easier to determine signs. So if we plug a 1 in, I have 3 minus 5, so this is negative. And a 1 minus 3, that's negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So that guy will be positive. So my 2, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1, that's positive. 2 minus 3 is negative, so positive times a negative is a negative. And finally, 7 halves. This will be, what, 21 halves, which is, uh, then minus 5, that's definitely positive. And then uh, 7 halves is 3 and a half, so minus 3, that's positive. So we have ourselves a positive again. And so for our acceleration, we plug 1 in. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus 7 is negative, so that guy will start being negative. And then our 3, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 7, that's positive. So we have these values. And once again, I only care about their signs, so positive or negative. So let's go ahead and put these velocity signs in. So at 1, it was positive, so that's that first area. And then at 2, it's negative, so that's here and here. And at 7 halves, it was positive, so that guy's here again. And the reason the negative got 2 is because this purple line, remember, is just kind of a dash line. This is the critical point for the acceleration, but really has no bearing right now on the velocity. Okay, so the other guy is the acceleration. So our first part is negative, so here and here. And the second one is positive, so here and here. Okay, we're almost done. Now we just need to determine on what intervals our particle is speeding up and on what intervals we are slowing down. So let's go ahead and write this down. We'll say speeding up and slowing down. Okay. So remember, it's speeding up anytime the signs are the same. So here we have the same, so we're speeding up, and here we have the same, so we're speeding up. So the velocity is negative, so we're moving to the left, and our acceleration is negative, so we're being pushed to the left. So the direction we're moving is the direction we're being pushed, similarly here. So that's where we're speeding up. So our speeding up can be a couple of intervals. Looks like 5 thirds to 7 thirds. 
and also looks like from three to four right there all right, so our slowing down then will be where the signs are opposite. So I put it down for slowing down. So we have positive and negative. So we're moving to the right, but being pushed to the left. And here we're moving to the left, but being pushed to the right. So from zero to five thirds. And from seven thirds to three. Okay, so here is the answer I'm looking for. And it looks like from zero to four, which was my interval, every value is taken into consideration. So from zero to five thirds, and where this guy leaves off, this guy picks up, and then five thirds to seven thirds, where he leaves off, he picks up. Seven thirds to three, three to four, and we've got all the values. So once again, a quick recap. We were given a position function for our particle that was moving along the x-axis, and we cared about that particle from time t equals 0 to time t equals 4. We went ahead and found velocity and acceleration functions for our particle. We set each of those equal to 0 to find some critical numbers. We went ahead and plotted those critical numbers on our number line with our endpoints 0 and 4. And then we use some test points to determine whether or not those functions, velocity and acceleration, were positive or negative in between those critical points. And finally, we went ahead and compared the signs of the velocity with the acceleration to determine when it was speeding up or slowing down.